I'm gonna U-turn the Palkia. There's a chance, like, does the Palkia have Protect? I don't think it does. Oh, that's not what it... There's an Iron Ball Kyogre. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on with this crazy Ho-Oh Kyogre team in today's episode. So we kicked off with this call at the start of the week, then we changed things up in yesterday's episode, and we're keeping everything the same going into today's to try and test out things like that Mega Sceptile a little bit more. Now we had two really good games yesterday. If you missed yesterday's episode, I'll link a card up there for you. You can check that out. Um, we won our first one, and then we had, oh, it was just all over the shop in the second one, wasn't it? And we were so close at the end, made things very difficult for ourselves, but an entertaining battle nonetheless. I'm still a bit sour from the loss, um, just because I know that we could have won that potentially if we just made a few different uh, decisions throughout that game. But nevertheless positive about how the, the, the battles are going so far um, and I feel like the team can really progress this week so we're going to continue on with it today as always the team is down in the description below there's a raw paste poker paste so try it out if you'd like to and without further ado we'll just hop straight on to the battle spot and get underway with this team today hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent and as always if you do enjoy this sort of content my friends do leave a like on the video it does really help out the channel do subscribe to the channel as well for more Pokemon content and uh, leave your comments down below let me know your thoughts on Mega Sceptile if you saw the games yesterday what your thoughts were on those games what your thoughts are on the games today after we've played a couple of games and uh, which direction you'd maybe go with the team if um, if you were playing with it and where you see some some improvements could be made because that's what we're always looking for testing out as well and seeing how the core actually performs in the current format so um, Sceptile did well yesterday. It did all the things we needed to do. Um, I think the second game was just... Oh, go back and watch it. We explain it quite well in that one. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping we can get a little bit more momentum going today. Get a couple of wins under our belt. And uh, start really kind of pushing towards the end of the week with this team. And um, there we go. First opponent. Just like magic. Okay, so our first opponent today running a team of Ray, Quaza, and Kyogre. So Ray Ogre Core combined with Tapu Koko, Incineroar, Cartana, and Mimikyu. So Mimikyu, an interesting pick here. Not something you see too commonly uh, run on these Kyogre and Rayquaza teams, but something that's popping up more and more as the, the latter part of the season goes on. You've got the supporting cast there of Incineroar with Fake Out, Intimidate support, the terrain support from the Tapu Koko. Cartana there, the grass type that makes up that Firewater grass core with the Kyogre. Um, and probably maybe a speed control setter for the team because you're looking at probably Mimikyu with Trick Room potentially and then Cartana with Tailwind because outside of that the team really struggles with any sort of t um, speed control. Um, okay, I do think Sceptile is going to be quite good for us here um, and I think Sceptile, I do want to bring in Cineral because I think the Intimidate is going to be really important for us. Uh, I do want to bring our own Kyogre of course. And it's down to that last Pokemon. What do we want? Do we want Ho-Oh? ho, -Oh? ho -Oh could be... Well, ho -Oh is extremely good against Cartana. Could do a decent job against Mimikyu. Uh, not bad against Incineroar. That can't really damage us. Uh, we've just got to worry about the Tapu Koko. Uh, the Ray to a certain extent. And the, the, the Kyogre, obviously. But um, we've got tools on our side of the field to deal with those threats. I think I'm going to bring the birds. So, bird up. Let's get into this first one today. So, here we go. Alright. Rayoga. It's such a strong call and it's a popular one as well. It's always one of those ones that I would say if you're going into a tournament, make sure that you've got your matchup locked down against those type of calls. Um, it's an easy call to pilot as well, I feel. You know, uh, the, the, the Ray Kaza really opens the door for Kyogre to do a lot of things that it needs to and likes to do um, without much resistance. Uh, Tapu Koko also pairs it with it super nicely as well. Now we are seeing Koko and Rayquaza come out for my opponent. We've got the opportunity here to actually Mega Evolve, fake out Koko and go for a Dragon Pulse into the Ray. Um, and if we can snipe a quick knockout there, that would be, be incredibly nice. Because I don't know how many players have played against Mega Sceptile. 
before, but um, if they're not familiar with it, they might not know about it being a dragon type. <laughs> I don't know how many people like don't know that, but I don't know. You never know. Players are players, and uh, the things that they're not so commonly playing against do pop up and surprise them, so you never know. But uh, this could be a Salt Vest Ray as well, so it could make things a bit difficult for us. And if we lose Septile here, it is a little bit risky, because if it's Sashed or if it's a Salt Vest, we could lose Septile, and things could, can get very difficult for us very quickly, um, because we lose our Lightning Rod support, and the Tapu Koko becomes a big problem very, very immediately uh, now we're going to see Incineroar take the place of Tapu Koko here I wonder if we'll just see the Rayquaza protect we might do um, but like I said if we can get a Dragon Pulse off here it'll be, it'll be really good for us to just get some big damage onto this Ray early on it does just protect though it doesn't even Mega Evolve not going for it this turn um, and we'll get the fake out into the incineral and just get a little bit of chip damage there. So that's fine. Um, I think my opponent has to fake out the Zeptile because of the threat of that Dragon Pulse. Um, I'm going to bring in ho uh, Because if we can try and get a Tailwind up, that would be good. And I'm going to try a new turn out onto the Rayquaza just to break a potential Sash there. We know it protected last turn, so we can at least try and get a U turn into it there keep our Intimidate cycle going, keep the Incinero in the back and uh, can have a fresh fake out when it does come onto the field again. Step out, out. And ho oh, oh, coming up to the field. Let's see what my opponent goes for. As the raid is Mega Evolving now. And it is minus one as well, so that that helps us out a little bit, I think, with the, the damage output that we kind of expect from it here. Uh, Delta Stream activating. And there's a fake out into... Yep, yeah, oh, oh, and Sword Stance. That's not great. That isn't great at all. But we'll get a U-turn into it. Like I say, it's likely with the Sword Stance maybe Sash there. It might not be as well. You know, it might be Berry, Bulky Berry. We've seen that kind of grown in popularity after... My good friend Alex and uh, Eric from Spain have used that to good success at the World Championships and recent regional events. Um, hmm, I could bring in Kyogre just to overwrite the Delta Stream. Put a little bit of pressure on the Rayquaza as well. Um, but the, like the next turn, I definitely want to be getting in uh, Incineroar for Intimidate support. Now whether I do that on the Kyogre slot, um, it might be a good idea to do that to be honest and try and get a Tailwind up now and switch like Tailwind and then switch Kyogre out to Incineroar just to nullify that Sword Stance that my opponent went for. The problem is I think if the Rayquaza goes for another Sword Stance now uh, that could be quite tricky. But at least us getting Incineroar in while we set in the, the Tailwind up, it does give us a little bit of room to manoeuvre the next turn if we want to fake out and maybe get Kyogre back onto the field or Sceptile or just get some damage off with Hot. Um, I'd be worried that Coco might make an appearance in that Incineroar slot where it goes for a U-turn this turn. Requires are just protecting, so that makes things a little bit easier, especially going into that next turn, as we do get the Tailwind up. Um, but like I say, I think what we'll see is a U-turn and then Coco will come back onto the field. Uh, it just supports. The Ray a little bit better. That's Kyogre. Okay. Hmm. Now, if we don't fake out the Rayquaza, it's going to Sword Stance. But I mean, we've got a good opportunity to... Um, hmm. We could... Break. It's tricky, isn't it? We really need to 
we need to fake out the Kyogre here. But we will outspeed it with Incineroar, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I'm going to Brave Bird the Ray, and I'm going to fake out Kyogre. Because you know the Ray protected last turn. So no protect coming out from my opponent. I'll get the Brave Bird into the Ray. They should do good damage as well. Should definitely set it up for a knockout the next turn. And if it goes Sword Stance, it can only go for an extreme speed. Let's go in front of Dragon Ascent. Okay. Where are we going? Like, I wouldn't mind if this actually knocked us out, you know, to be honest. Yeah, because it opens the door for us to get Kyogre onto the field or Sceptile. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll get Kyogre onto the field now. Because we can just water spout. Um, and switch Incineroar. We can probably U-turn as well. Into the Kyogre. It's Incineroar. Yeah, we'll outspeed Kyogre now. And then we can get Sceptile onto the field. We could hard switch, but... Just in case the Incineroar comes in on that slot. I doubt it will. Like other Coco. I think the thing to worry about is getting caught by maybe um, an Ice Beam. If my opponent predicts the Sceptile coming in on the Incineroar slot. But it's imperative for us right now to keep Sceptile in a really healthy position because Sceptile is the one thing protecting our Kyogre from that type of Coco. And as long as we've got Sceptile on the field, then we're not in a bad position at all. We're going to see an Extreme Speed come out. Uh, water Spout is going to be weakened, but it should still be enough to get the Ray. Um, do a little bit of damage to that Kyogre. And, uh, the U-turn will do a little bit more chip as well, which is, which is quite nice. Um, we, yeah, taking it down just to about 60% health, and we'll get Sceptile onto the field now. And like I say, hopefully we don't see an Ice Beam. If we see an Ice Beam into this slot, it's going to make things very difficult for us. Scald. Okay, that's fine. And Sceptile taking that pretty comfortably. No burn either, so the electric terrain does disappear. Hmm. And with the Rayquaza out of the way, Kyogre definitely has an easier time. It's a type of Coco that I do worry about. Yeah, the Coco coming in now. But a Skull should be able to get rid of it. It's just how many turns of Tailwind have we got left. Because one of the things we could potentially do is just scald the type of Coco now and go for a Leaf Storm into the, the Kyogre. But it's quite risky because if my opponent goes... For, like... Do they have Thunder? I don't know if they do. And we outspeed it anyway. So I think you probably protect the Kyogre, the, the type of Coco this turn. This is why I would like to probably go for a Leaf Storm into the Kyogre rather than protect... Because I'm confident a Scald should take it down, but yeah, we're not going to see that. Are we just going to see a double protect, maybe? Yeah. But the next turn, this is the this is the thing, Nate. That this next turn, we can protect Sceptile um, and go for the Scald into the, the Coco. Because the Coco can't really touch Kyogre now. Um... And at least we've got two turns where we can get away. I think one thing we have to worry about a little bit is the Ethereum on the Coco, which I'm hoping behind a Protect it doesn't pick up the knockout. It shouldn't do. Sceptile's not the bulkiest of Pokemon. Like, from that last attack option that we went for, you would say that my opponent may want to bring in Incineroar on the Kyogre slot um, and go for a Dazzling Gleam or Ethereum with the Tapu Coco. But this isn't the worst play at all, because, I mean, we're not really losing out here at all. Sceptile, Kyogre going to switch out for Incineroar, yeah. Um, if we can get the, the, the Tapu Koko here, though, I think our lives are made so much easier. Sceptile protecting. Let's see. 
It is the Ferium, I think. Yeah, they're going for it. Let's see. Let's see. It'd be interesting to know how much Sceptile takes from this. Oh, come on, Sceptile. Survive, please. Come on. Come on. You can do it, Sceptile. You can do it. You've got that big, chunky protect in front of you. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Not so easy, but I'm pleased. I wasn't convinced. Bye bye, Call Call. Get your ass down. That skull doing all the work there. We've got to worry this next turn though, because we are susceptible to uh, um, to fake out and an ice beam from the Kyogre, which would make sense going into the Sceptile here, because we're, we're, we're such a threat for the opposing Kyogre. Although our Kyogre really does threaten the Incineroar. Um, I'm going to switch into our NC now, and um, we'll preserve the Sceptile so we've got at least. Uh, a way to deal with the Kyogre with Sceptile, but my opponent forfeits. So, very good game to my opponent, and we're off to a nice winning start today, which is excellent. So, um, yeah, happy about that, and that was a good game. And Sceptile again, coming in pretty clutch for us, and it's, I think from Monday's episode, where we ended up saying how difficult Tapu Koko felt for the team to deal with, and then the inclusion of Sceptile, which is just totally eradicating that issue completely especially when we've got the board position next to Tapu Koko uh, with Kyogre uh, where we can just click the skull button and then not worry about anything and um, obviously a bulkier Tapu Koko would be a bit of an issue but I think how many Kokos are really that bulky and even if it is sashed and even if it is bulky all we need is that addition that initial scald onto it then the next turn Sceptile will outspeed and can get an attack off onto it anyway so um we're, deal we're able to deal with Coco quite quite easily. I'm sure we played this team already this week, have we? Have we? I don't know. I'm pretty sure we have. I'm not sure though. Maybe I played it when I was like testing out some stuff. Maybe, but anyway, we'll get into team preview. Because it is a team consisting of Palke Kyogre, big shout out to Will, one of our Patreon members there. Uh, Stack Attacker, the camera up, which is probably going to be the mega of the team. Tap Coco and Incineroar. Looking at Trick Room variants, uh, going to be heavy Trick Room, I think, because the Palkia and Stack Attacker both carry it, supporting probably the Kyogre, uh, the camera up as well. Uh, definitely a Trick Room Pokemon. Tap Coco. Um For the terrain and the Incineroar with a fake out support now. Hmm. Sceptile could be decent here. This isn't going to be tricky. Definitely going to be a tricky one. I do want to bring Sceptile, I think, because of the Dragon Pulse. It beats Kyogre. It can damage the um, the Stack Attacker and the Camera pretty nicely. Um, but I want Fake Out support for sure. Uh, if Trick Room goes up and the Intimidate could be quite nice from Incineroar. Let's go Kyogre, and then I think if the Trick Room does go up, we're going to need something to help us out there. So, actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to bring ho -Oh instead of Stacks. Because Camera Up, if it comes down to it, Camera Up versus ho -Oh, Camera Up isn't going to be able to really damage ho -Oh, unless it's got, like, Ancient Power, which I very much doubt it has. Um, so we should be all right against it. We'll see how we get on here. Um... But an interesting build, nonetheless. Never really seen Mega Camera up, so it's going to be good going up against it. I'll bring out a shiny, shiny set tile. Um, Palkia and Incineroar are coming out for my opponent. You've got to imagine that Trick Room is definitely on the cards for my opponent. Like, if they can get the Trick Room up, it makes life so much easier for them, doesn't it? Um, are we just going to trade fake outs here? I mean, one thing we could do is just... I never like to fake out a fake out user. I'd rather trade fake outs if I'm like completely honest. Um, but what we could try and do is, is play around. I mean, we could trade fake outs for sure. And I could just Mega Evolve and Dragon Pulse. The Palkia, Fake Out and Dragon Pulse it. I don't think a Dragon Pulse, single Dragon Pulse, will get the Palkia though, to be honest. Um, if we get it off. If my opponent decides to pivot out, or maybe switch the Incineroar, who knows. 
uh, that's a fake out. We'll probably just trade though, I think, this first turn. Yeah, fake out. And fake out, yeah. Now we could go for a Dragon Pulse now. And you could snarl the Palkia. It kind of weakens it, makes it less effective. I um, mean, if the Trick Room goes up and the, the Kyogre does come in, it does mean that Incineroar will be slower than it. And yeah, I'm going to snarl. I don't want a Dragon Pulse. I don't think we've got a real way to stop the Trick Room going up anyway. So we're just going to have to try and stall it out. Oof, that does decent damage, doesn't it? Ah, oh, the Snarl misses the one thing that we wanted to hit. I don't care about the Incineroar. Do not care about the Incineroar. God damn it. And it's eject button. Okay, yeah, I remember that. I definitely played this in testing, I think. I think it's slightly different. A slightly different variant than I played, though, when I, oh, when I was doing a bit of testing over the weekend. Uh, Kyogre likely to come in now. Yes. It's not primal though. That's strange. It's not primal Kyogre. Huh. That is really very strange. Um Alright, so we'll protect um I could stay in and snarl with Incineroar. Or I could U turn. I'm going to U-turn the Palkia. There's a chance, like, does the Palkia have Protect? I don't think it does. Oh, that Snarl would... Is that Iron Ball Kyogre? <laughs> oh, really, really, really. <laughs> Iron Ball, it must be. When you when you really wish, when you really wish you had stack attacker. Ah, oh, this is terrible. Um, I mean, I don't really think we can. Uh, okay, septile. Gonna have to try and double protect with it because we've got no protect on hot. Or I'm gonna have to try and water spout with Kyogre. I'll leave Storm the Kyogre and I will go for a Water Spout. I'll go for an Ice Beam to get rid of the Palkia. I'll do a Water Spout to weaken that Kyogre. Hmm. Or do I preserve Sceptile here? Because how many turns have we got left? Three. Okay. We're still going to have to have a double protect at some point though. I'll Water Spout. I'll, I'll bring in no, 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 no. Yeah, I'll bring in ho oh, oh. And a water spout. And try and get damage on this opposing Kyogre. We could have scalded it as well, but, like, if... If our Kyogre's not damaged too much, the water spout might be enough to just get that park here. Oh, water spout. I don't know if we'll take this with Ho-Oh. Oh. Nah. I only take a heck of a lot of damage here. Gonna have to really rely on the, the spatial ren missing. That snarl is not that snarl missed. I know it's not the pivotal moment of the match, but that definitely hasn't helped us there. Yeah, no way has that helped us at all. We need double protect all around now. That's the nothing. That's the nothing. Uh yeah, we're gonna have to protect. Double protect, double protect. <laughs> Ah, that is a shame. I can't believe Iron Ball Kyogre. Oh, we're going to have to try and hack our way out of this one. <sighs> Which is never good. When you when you come to that realisation in a match, it's <laughs> never a good thing. Um, you know, it's not going to be over, though. You know, If we can potentially get through this trick room, we can we can still win this game. Let's go an ice beam rather than that. So spatial rend into yoga. Okay. Yeah, moment of truth. 
Moment of truth, can we get the double protect, double protect, double protect? I believe we can. Kyoga, you rubbish. <laughs> Sceptile, you're just as bad. You're all bad. Okay, well. Good game to my opponent. That is a quick match today. Iron Ball Kyoga did not expect that. Uh, out of every variant of non-primal Kyoga, did not expect that. Uh, Ho-Ho definitely was the bad choice. 100% like wear stack attacker when you need it. So, very good game to my opponent. Um, I don't think you'll be going up against too many Iron Ball Kyogres at tournaments though, so I don't think you have too much to worry about. But uh, fair play to my opponent for bringing that onto the ladder and uh, it, it obviously did some work. So, best of one team, definitely. Um, very good game to my opponent today. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm still getting over that. Iron Ball Kyogre. Right, let's move on. Anyway, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll try and push on with this team and um, we'll see how far we can take it. So thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. Have a great one and I'll see you for the next one. So until then, bye-bye.